हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू सोनी आई ए एस गाइज टूडे इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मेन्स आर्टिकल्स फॉर द नेम ऑफ द प्रोग्राम हेयर एज यू कैन सी इज मेन्स आर्टिकल डिस्कशन एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू पिक अ टॉपिक ऑफ पॉलिटी अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर अवर अंडरस्टैंडिंग देर आर लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट हैव डायरेक्टली कम अप इन द लास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक एज वेल एज दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अवर बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द इंडियन पॉलिटी you can use this content in many answers when there are answers uh, you know questions related to the legislature or the judiciary or related to fundamental rights everywhere almost you can use this topic so we will start with a basic understanding of what is the basic structure what do we mean by the basic structure let's get started quickly so first of all to begin to understand this topic we will have to uh, you know understand a basic a few basic things a few articles and then i will take you down through the evolution or the emergence of this topic so when we talk about uh, the indian constitution we follow the doctrine of supremacy of the constitution what do we follow supremacy what does this mean that the constitution of india is the supreme most pillar of our country the political structure no pillar of the government or no other organ formed under the constitution can override what is written in the constitution that is what we mean when we say the supremacy of the constitution we also follow another doctrine called the doctrine of checks and balances now what is this what is doctrine of checks and balances i'll brief you in 30 seconds we have three important pillars which ensures that the democratic values of the country are intact and all the organs work in sync with each other to uh, you know give us good governance so let us see what are the pillars we have the legislature whose job is to make the laws then we have the executive the job of the executive is to execute these laws and then we have the judiciary what uh, you know is the purpose of the judiciary here normally judiciary is uh, a body which gives justice to people now when we talk about judiciary in the entire scheme of things from a bird eye view the judiciary here is the protector of the fundamental rights of citizens and judiciary is also the custodian of the constitution protector of the constitution from whom these two organs so the constitution of india has instructed these three bodies to work in a way that if one body is overstepping its authority then the other body will come into picture and try to make this body work in its own sphere and not go outside of it so judiciary since it is the protector of the fundamental rights of the people and the protector or the custodian of the constitution the legislature the executive and the judiciary they lot of times come into a direct conflict what sort of a conflict now i will refer to you a couple of article numbers which will uh, you know increase your uh, understanding a bit further so when we talk about the articles article number 13 of the indian constitution says that the judiciary has the power 
to strike down any law means to declare any law null and void if it is violating the fundamental rights. Now here the controversial word is law. Now why it is controversial we will discuss in a minute. Also we have article number 368 which gives the power to the legislature, to the parliament to make amendments in the constitution. Okay, So on one side the constitution is giving the power to amend certain portions of the constitution. The same time, at the same time, article 13 is empowering the judiciary to safeguard the fundamental rights from the legislature and executive. Okay, So this is the basic premise of the doctrine of basic structure. I hope I am clear. So what usually happens is, pe, the legislature will make a law, someone will approach the judiciary and that person will say that my fundamental rights are infringed because of a certain change in the constitution. Okay, And then judiciary will decide whether that change is constitutional, has to be declared valid or the change is unconstitutional and has to be declared null and void. Simple, very simple. We will understand the evolution. Now since you are having this information, it will be better for you to understand this structure in a proper way. You know guys, there are a lot of students uh, you know, who have uh, studied polity uh, in detail, who have you know, given an attempt or two, but still the basic structure thing is still complicated to lot of students, not all, but lot of students. So we will take it from the basics and we will, you know, generate content, we will think about dimensions which will be helpful for you in your mains examination. Okay. So now what happened was the emergence, first time the basic structure doctrine was uh, you know, used, invoked, mentioned in Keshavananda Bharti case. Right? But it is not enough to just know that in which case it initiated. It is obviously important to know. But we have to understand the emergence. So, uh, before the Keshavananda Bharti case, this doctrine was quoted in Sajjan Singh case in 1965 uh, by Justice Madhulkar and he had taken the precedent from one of the judgments of Supreme Court of Pakistan by Judge Cornelius. That judge said that you know it is unconstitutional for the precedent to make changes to the basic structure of the constitution. This is just extra information that you should know in case uh, you know you have to quote it somewhere it will make a, a better understanding on the evolution but in India it evolved explicitly from the Keshavananda Bharti case. So for this let us understand the sequence in which it evolved. Okay. So after independence what happened was the ninth schedule was enacted by the first constitutional amendment and there were certain laws which were kept there which were out of the purview of the judiciary. There was land reorganization going on at lot of places and that is how the cases started. So there was a Shankari Prasad case. So same thing here one person felt that by the changes made by the parliament his or her fundamental rights have been infringed. So this person approached the judiciary. What was the outcome of it? Here the court said that okay 
it passed an order that the term law the term law in article 13 applies applies only to ordinary law and not to the constitutional amendments made by the legislature so here what happened there is some sort of uh, you know uh, checks and balance happening check and balance you know uh, something like you know you're playing tennis so tennis wali baat ho gayi ki bhai ek ne maar diya apne yahan se now here who is winning the legislature is getting lot of powers to amend the constitution and judiciary will not have a say so judiciary declares that article using article 368 if there is an amendment made then the judiciary cannot intervene and declare it null and void now when we go further we will see another landmark case the very very famous golaknath case okay now in golaknath case one very important thing came out here what happened the judiciary gave unlimited power to the parliament to amend the constitution okay in golaknath case golaknath uh, you know was a person who had lot of money uh, lot of land actually and state of punjab had enacted certain laws wherein uh, his he was about to lose his land so he approached the court asking for the validity of this law so here the court took a stand that the fundamental rights here this person's fundamental rights were being infringed so the fundamental rights are sacrosanct fundamental rights are sacrosanct and the parliament has no authority to amend the fundamental rights so here what happened was the judiciary got more powerful and the amending right of the parliament was restricted now after the defeat in the golaknath case right the power was curtailed it was restricted it was limited what happens is that the legislature enacts 24th 25th 26th and 29th amendment and these amendments they are limiting the powers of the judiciary they are limiting the powers uh, you know of judicial intervention into certain things and they are also making certain changes in the fundamental rights now a major question evolved in the state of kerala when a person holding a religious trust said that these uh, amendments are non constitutional under article 26 of the fundamental rights religious institutions have the right to manage their movable and immovable properties the way it is convenient to them it is a fundamental right it is a religious right to institutions religious institutions so so this very famous keshavananda bharti case emerged wherein keshavananda bharti challenged these amendments made by the parliament finally a 13 bench 13 judge bench was made which is the biggest bench uh, that is constituted till today and by 6 is to 7 a verdict came out in which the court said that the amending power of the parliament under article 368 the parliament can amend anything that it wants but the amendments should not alter the basic structure of the constitution the amendment should not alter the basic structure of the constitution what do we mean by this it meant that the parliament is free to you know make any changes but 
the basic uh, you know fundamentals the basic philosophy of the constitution like democracy secularism okay uh, the uh, federal uh, characteristics that we have the basic fundamental rights that a person needs for the democracy to be manifested in real sense all these things cannot be changed but otherwise the parliament can make any changes so guys this is our basic structure doctrine that is how it emerged now we have to understand one thing that the courts have not the courts have not defined the basic structure but there have been lot of cases that are hap that have been happening after the keshava nanda bharti case in 1973 and new elements have been added to the list of basic structure and the parliament under the article 368 cannot amend those characteristics you getting my point guys now we will you know just we have understood the you know basic structure doctrine what is it let me sum it up for you in a minute roughly a minute it is it emphasizes on the principle of checks and balances it limits the power of the legislature to you know change the structure of the country right it protects the fundamental rights of the people it protects the constitution so that is the importance right so we will look at the importance here on this slide but having a basic structure now you know i just said that uh, the judge cornelius 1963 in pakistan it said these things that the president of pakistan did not have the right but in the pakistan they don't have enforceability of this thing it was picked up by justice madhulkar he had quoted this in the sajjan singh case but it actually manifested explicitly in the keshav nanda bharti case so for the basic structure to be maintained we will need a judiciary that is independent that is powerful that is separated from the executive article 50 of our indian constitution talks about separation of executive from the judiciary now let us look at the importance what is the importance so in mains you could get asked you know that uh, how did the basic structure doctrine evolve after that you might be asked the importance not directly but indirectly these are the things that are asked and this is how you are supposed to present so there can be a question that the basic structure the judiciary enforces its control on the parliament enforcing the basic structure doctrine and you have to justify that statement so there what we will do we will put the significance we will put the evolution briefly then we can put the importance so let us understand the importance the first thing it it upholds constitutionalism what is constitutionalism constitutionalism is a doctrine wherein the powers of different organs of the government are limited so can you connect now the parliament cannot change anything that it wants but it has to work around a limited circle right the parliament cannot make changes that it wants the parliament cannot behave so it talks about limiting the authority of the parliament and by doing this the principle of constitutionalism is upheld the second thing it upholds democracy how it is protecting the fundamental rights of the people basically the cases that we have seen in the emergence or the evolution they show that all the battles have been against the protection of fundamental rights so say for example the parliament uh, tomorrow wants to uh, curtail the freedom of speech and, and expression maybe because uh, there are a lot of uh, uprisings happening against the present government but the parliament cannot do it why because the basic structure doctrine is defined not explicitly but it is at least evolved in india and the judiciary will strike down any law that is made to curtail the freedom of speech and expression of people similarly if we talk about uh, you know another important case uh, when there was this uh, 
uh, you know demolition of babri masjid uh, happening the president of uh, india it declared that the government is not able to hold the principle of secularism and that was the reason that the government was dismissed so you can say that yes the democracy is upheld by this basic structure doctrine what is democracy it is of the people for the people by the people a very famous quote given in you know three words it has summed up democracy so when the rights of people or a certain segment of people are infringed then we can say that democracy will be demolishing because it is democracy means that all the people come together and they are the people people are the super most in a democracy so the basic structure protects the rights now it ensures checks and balances we just uh, spoke through it it ensures checks and balances yes if the parliament is doing something ex and going beyond its jurisdiction beyond its powers then the judiciary will step in it will check and then a balance will be made and safety guard against majoritarianism and authoritarianism so as we just discussed that what can happen the parliament if the government has a majority they can pass any bill that they want and they can enforce it on the people but since the structure of basic structure since we have the basic structure doctrine evolved and functional this can be avoided even if the majority government wants to make a law okay and make the government authoritarian it is not possible because the judiciary will not allow them to alter the basic structure the philosophy of the constitution now whenever we study things we can also be asked the criticism so now we just spoke about article number 50 what is article number 50 separation of executive from the judiciary we believe that all these three organs should work separately so that there are no biases and the people can get justice and the governance will work in a better way but here what we are seeing is that judiciary is stepping into the domain of the legislature and telling the legislature that this is uh, right and this is wrong this is a criticism whenever the answer is asked in mains we always have to mention that the basic structure doctrine is very important it protects us right we wrote uh, the importance after that it is not a part of the constitution it was never defined in the constitution it is not even mentioned in the constitution and it is a new evolution so it is an argument that article 368 is mentioned in the constitution which gives the power to the government the legislature to make any laws and the basic structure is an evolved document after that tyranny of the unelected so in a democracy all of us we are a representative democracy so we all go to the polling booths we vote and we elect one person to represent us so the parliament the legislature is the body of the people by the people right and the judiciary there are no elected members right the judges we have not chosen who will be the judge so the judiciary so it is said that it is it is a tyranny of the unelected people we have sent our representatives and they will take the right decision for us why is judiciary intervening that is a argument here lack of clarity in the judgment most of the times it happens that since the basic structure doctrine is not defined it keeps on expanding and it brings lot of confusion amongst the people now the same argument it says that we are a democracy so the ultimate sovereignty or the ultimate power resides with the people and the representation of the people how are we giving the power to the unelected people to go and review the decisions of an unelected body so guys a very simple thing that we have uh, you know studied today very basic topic very simple topic india is a democratic country 
so there is will of the people again to avoid authoritarianism and majoritarianism the constitution has put certain checks and balances article 13 gives the power to the court to the judiciary to declare null and void any law that infringes the rights of the people so what is happening is basically the constitution of india is uh, you know deep rooted in constitutional values okay so it is thinking about the people now when the parliament will amend certain things which will infringe the fundamental rights if anyone will approach the courts the courts after that keep on you know 1951 shankri prasad case gave unlimited power golakhnath case they restricted the power and basic structure doctrine evolved from keshavananda bharati case wherein they said that the law, parliament is free to change anything but it has to be within a specified limit wherein the basic structure of the constitution is not harmed so summing it up this basic structure doctrine protects our constitution right from changing its structure it protects and upholds the fundamental rights of the people hence it is strengthening the democracy it also uh, you know enforces constitutionalism which is a principle which limits the authority or power of different organs of the government these are the important points and these are the keywords that has to be mentioned in your answer with this understanding you will be able to write down content for any mains questions that has been asked or that will be asked this is a basic understanding that we needed to cultivate so guys thank you very much for watching the lecture keep on watching the lecture uh, you know to for us to continue the series do like the video thank you very much this is our telegram channel you can join it also do subscribe to the channel for more videos and we will keep on coming up with small topics like these and we will discuss lot of mains related static and current affairs articles in this series thank you very much